Hurricane Harvey has certainly been a great test for our community, and I am just so proud of the way we have showed up for each other in this massive recovery effort. I'm reminded once again that we, we need each other, and that's why I'm encouraging you to be part of a small group at the church. Uh, this week, small groups are forming on all three of our campuses. So all you have to do is look down at your bulletin, and there's either a list of small groups, if you're at the west end of the Missouri City campus, or there's instructions at the Richmond campus on how to get involved. You can always go to the lobby at your campus today and sign up and register for a small group. And of course, being online is the best way to go and sign up and get a complete listing of all the small groups. It's every day at different parts of the community. Uh, there's a group for you, I promise. Men's group, women's group, couples group, singles group, professional group. I mean, there's groups for every Body. Let me tell you about one group that I'm really excited about. This semester we're offering it the West End Campus and the Richmond Campus. It's called Starting Point. Starting Point is for everyone who would like to get more familiar with their Bible and familiar with the tenets of the Christian faith. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? It is a great group, one of the most popular things that we offer each semester. And I wanna encourage you, especially if you have never been in a group before, to try the starting point group on West End and Richmond's campus. I promise you, you'll learn a lot and be encouraged in your faith by going through starting point, okay? Well, today we continue our series called Found. We've been talking about different things that we all are looking for, and today, Ryan Leak is gonna share something that we are all looking for, and that is to make an impact. We're all looking to make an impact, and Ryan's gonna encourage you, I know, with his <coughs> message, and uh, I always love hearing what he has to say. You'll be challenged in a deep way. So would you help welcome our friend, our teaching pastor, Ryan Leak. Good morning, Reverend Point. It is uh, always an honor to, to be here. Um, and, and before we kind of dive into uh, the thing that we're all looking for, which, which is impact, um, I just want to say, um, as a part of the teaching team, um, I, I live in Dallas. I reside there and, um, and get to uh, come and be a part of what's happening here at River Point um, about uh, once a month or once every other month. And, and it's so cool to um, as, I, as I was sitting in Dallas watching the news and uh, on the phone with Patrick and just hearing uh, all of the amazing things that, that you guys are doing, um, it just it really, really blessed me um, to hear that over 2,000 people have been deployed out to help people that have been devastated by Hurricane Harvey uh, just, just moved me deeply. And, and to hear um, that you all raised over $400,000 for hurricane relief. And uh, you should put your hands together uh, for yourselves. <laughs> For that, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really amazing uh, to, to see just so many people rally. I, I had uh, one of my best friends was actually having a baby at the hospital downtown uh, while Hurricane Harvey was there. So they, they were kind of barricaded into the hospital and couldn't get out. And um, I, I even had a, another friend um, who uh, didn't get out in time and, and basically evacuated to his second uh, floor of his house. And they wrote on the window, save us. I mean, it, it was some scary, scary times for him. And, and two guys on a boat came by and saved uh, him and his wife and, and his two kids. And I just, I, I, I just began to think about that for a second. I just thought, don't we all respond to, this, to that sign the same way? We don't have them fill out a form or an application if, if for, for help. We don't ask them what the religion is or who they voted for. We, we just help people. And uh, one, of my, one of my friends a few weeks ago when the Charlottesville stuff was happening, he said, man, what do you think about the state of our country? I said, you've never even heard of Charlottesville before. So how is that our country? And, and, now, uh, and, and then a couple news cycles later, we're, we're looking at Houston. And I just want you to know, uh, just from somebody that lives in Dallas and, and travels a little bit, the country's taking notes on you. They're taking notes on, on how you've responded to, uh, to, to the storm. And it, it's been... It's been impeccable. So, so thank you uh, from somebody that's just out of town and just, just for being who you are. In fact, when we talk about now being a person that is looking for impact, you're the message. You, you're, you're the message. So, um, so yeah, make, make a round of applause uh, for, for yourselves. Um, the first verse I want us to look at is found in Ephesians. The Bible says this, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us 
long ago. Now, uh, whether you're a Christian or not, may, maybe you were dragged here by your spouse, or maybe a friend convinced you to come here. They told you they'd buy you brunch. Make sure you keep them to that, okay? Um, like, I, I'm not sure exactly how you ended up um, in this space today or whether you're watching online, but what I want everybody in this room to know is this. God had a plan for you long before you were born, and he set up some good things for you to do. And if I'm you, I would spend my life and my energy trying to figure out what those good things are, trying to discover my purpose. And perhaps a storm didn't happen on accident. Perhaps a storm was a setup for you to do some good things. And, and today we're, we're going to talk about the fact that I believe we are all looking for an impact and perhaps that impact can be found in those good things. And I think it started when, when we were a kid. And I don't know when your first moment was when you kind of figured out that you were designed to not just live life, not just make some money, not just get a house, not just get your kids to college, but to like really make a difference, to have a life that really matters. And for me, it, it was uh, when I was about nine years old. Uh, my dad, um, he passed away about a year and a half ago, but he was an African Methodist Episcopal Church pastor. What that means is our church is black, okay? Like, that's just the best way for me to explain to you kind of what, what the deal was there. And, um, you know, like at River Point, you know, you, you have like five services and, you know, there's three this morning. And, and uh, at, at our church, we, we just had one really long service that kind of encompassed all three of those, about four hours. It was great. And um, uh, we, we didn't have a whole lot of musicians. We had an organ player and, and a drummer. That, that was it. Sometimes the drummer showed up. Sometimes he didn't. If the drummer didn't show up, the organ player would be his own drummer with his left foot, and he'd just kind of do his deal. And we, 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 we had a ball. We loved it. And uh, one day, the drummer didn't show up, and our backup drummer was my brother, and, and he, was, he didn't show up either. And so um, my dad's kind of looking at my mom, and it's just like, is it, is it Ryan's moment? Now, you got to understand something. I was in a three-piece suit, royal blue with a clip-on tie, okay? I was living my life, okay? I was doing the deal. And, and I just, and I'm just, and, and people are clapping, the choir singing, and the organ player's just like, I could really use a drummer right now. And, and I just, I'll never forget, I remember looking at my mom, and I just like, take off my coat. I got this, okay? <laughs> We're going to do this deal. And uh, I began to walk towards my destiny, towards the drum kit, and... And I, I'm like, I'm about to make a difference. You got to understand something. I've never played drums in my life, but I'm about to learn. <laughs> I'm about to learn in front of like a few hundred people. And I'm just like, man, th this, is, this is what it means to be a pastor's kid. Like, we're just going to figure it out. And I remember I, I sat at, at that drum kit. I was so nervous. And I was about to hit the cymbal. And the drummer walks in late and saves our church. <laughs> you know, I was like, dude, you, you rescued us. This is great. Thank you for being here. And it was my first moment where it was just like, man, is my life going to matter? Am I going to get to, like, do something that, like, really makes a difference in the world? Am I going to fill in the gap where maybe somebody dropped the ball? Like, am I, can, can I really, really make a difference? And sometimes it, it, we think to make a big difference, we got to do something big. But sometimes it's just doing something small that makes a huge difference in in somebody's life. And, and the first story I want us to look at is found in John, and it's talking about Jesus uh, feeding 5,000 people. Maybe you've heard this story before, but Bible says this, Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now, the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Bible says, he said this to test them. For he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. Jesus 
opens up a buffet for 5,000 people. Now, scholars, scholars actually believe it wasn't just 5,000 people. The Bible says 5,000 men, and if you include their wives and their children, it could be upwards of fifteen to 20,000 people. Now, maybe you've heard this story in church before. Maybe you've heard about Jesus, and you go, okay, that's kind of like one of his tricks. He feeds people. We get that. Now, what, what, what's kind of the underlying thing in the story, kind of the untold part, even in the Bible, is that a boy was willing to give his life. That a boy was willing to go, hey, you know, it's not my fault everybody else mama didn't make them a lunch. (laughs) How's that my problem? I mean, if we're going to start feeding people, we can start with me because I I have a lunch. No, he, he was just simply a person that was willing to give his lunch to Jesus. And the first thing that I believe for you, if you really want to make an impact, is you you have to be able to look for needs and respond. And you can't let what you don't have keep you from giving what you do have. You can't let what you don't have keep you from giving what you do have. And you go, man, I don't don't have that much to give. But, man, you'd be surprised what, what you do have can do in God's hands. Can you imagine if we were people that just simply said, you know what? I'm going to allow my resources and my time and my skill sets, I'm going to put those in God's hands. And God, use my life to do good things. Use my life to do more with it than I can because I I know you have proven time and time again that you can do more with our stuff than we can with our own. Sometimes we we live with this notion that, you know what, I can't fix the whole thing, so I'm not going to fix anything. I can't feed 20,000 people, so I'm just not going to. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do anything. Um, there's this guy at my church named Fred. Fred always gives me a hard time. Second service. It's always second service gives you a hard time. And um, it was Mother's Day. And um, for Mother's Day, we, we had like T-shirts and a bunch of stuff, popcorn, all this stuff for moms. And he's standing in the lobby. He's hot. He's like, "Man, how come y'all always treat the moms so good and don't do nothing for the dads? We get we get like a little root beer or something like that. The moms get treated. They think they're the best moms in the world. Then we get beat up on Father's Day. Like you need to be a better dad and be there for your kids." It's like, he's like, man, man, what's up with that, Ryan? Fix it, man, fix it. I said, Fred, what do you want me to do? He said, man, just, I want breakfast. I want breakfast on Father's Day for all of I'm like, you want me to get like a whole buffet for, for dads? He goes, I want breakfast, Ryan. I heard you're the man. Make it happen. I said, what kind of breakfast do you want? He says, I, I, want, I want sausage and potatoes and bacon, Ryan. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, and then I, I, I go to a big church, and I'm like, man, it's, you know, I, I did the math to be about thirty to forty thousand dollars to get breakfast for everybody, <laughs> you know. And what am I supposed to do? Go to my pastor? Hey, buddy, can I have forty grand to get breakfast for the dad? Because Fred's mad, man. We got, we got to make things right for Fred. So, on Father's Day. Uh, on the way to church, we, uh, we go to IHOP and we get the breakfast sampler and Fred sees me in the lobby. He goes, ha, I knew it. I knew you wouldn't do nothing for the dads. I said, uh, here's your breakfast. <laughs> and he goes, you got me breakfast? I said, you said you wanted breakfast for Father's Day. So I'm going to get you breakfast for Father's Day. Hey, Fred, here's the deal. I don't have $40,000 to get everybody breakfast. But I do have 11. <laughs> and I can get you breakfast any day of the week. Sometimes you have to do for one what you wish you could do for everybody. Can you imagine if that was us? Can you imagine if we just decided to just go, you know what, I, I, can't, I can't get coffee for my whole job. Everybody at the job. Pick one. I can do what you can for other people. I promise you, you, you will find yourself making an impact. And, and when we are making an impact, it's going to cost us something. It might cost you your lunch. But man, I'd rather have, I'd rather have the impact than, than, than the full stomach. I can eat later. What, what, if, what if you're a student and maybe, maybe there's, there's somebody that just, just can't afford lunch? And, and you know, what if one day you just said, you know what, I'll, I'll eat after school. I mean, could you imagine if we just decided to just be people that just said, you know what? And, and I've heard this story all week long of people that lost everything, lost everything and decided to go help somebody else. I mean, could you imagine if that was just how we just lived our life all the time? Wouldn't, wouldn't we really, really make an impact? You know what really impressed me this week is there, there was an article um, in, in the Washington Times, and it, it said faith groups outpace FEMA. And I just thought, man, isn't that amazing? And, and I don't know about you, but... 
Like, that's... Like, for those of you that have friends that aren't Christians, our brand isn't that good, you know? Like, like people don't think that highly of faith groups. And, like, to, to, for, for the news to go, no, nah, man, we, we, we've watched faith groups just do some things we've never seen before. Man, man I, I just, it, it cost us a little something, didn't it? Like, impact really cost us a, a little, it's, we're going to have to sacrifice maybe a little bit of our time, a little bit. We're getting our hands dirty. I was on the phone with Pat this past week. I said, man, tell me what's been going on. He said, Ryan, it's a, it's a lot of mucking. I said, excuse me, Pastor? <laughs> What'd you say? He said, I said mucking with an M. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on down there. Tell me, you know? <laughs> and he said, Ryan, we're getting our hands dirty, man. It, it, he goes, it, it's, not, it's not an easy job whatsoever. And sometimes that's what it takes to... To, to make an impact is sacrificing for others. And, and, and like I said, you guys, you guys have been doing it. I, I, if anything, I, I feel like this is the crux of what God really wanted me to share with you this weekend is it's not just, man, you're, you're doing a good job, but really what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, and let us not grow weary of doing good. Man, some of you are just so tired. Just exhausted. You're just tired. You're like, man, I'm trying to do good. I just I got to get back to work, man. I got, I got stuff to do. I, man, I would just encourage you, man, don't grow weary. And the Bible says for in due season we will reap if we, if we do not give up. River Point, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep, keep, keep doing good. It, 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 it's, man, it, maybe it's the thing that you were born to do the whole time. Instead of doing all the things that we think we have to do all the time. What if you, what if you just consumed your life with things, the good things God planned for you to do a long time ago? And then the Bible says this. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Let's break that down for a moment. Uh, when should we do good? When we have the opportunity, which is when? All the time. And, 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 and who's on the list? Like, who should we do good to? Everybody in the club, right? I mean, everyone. <laughs> Everyone, it's like, man, like, I, I'm not going to pick and choose. And then, and then Paul goes, hey, and, and, and if you had to choose, man, start with the household of faith. Like, the people that are sitting in your row, man, like, they got a need. You just go, hey, man, we're just, we're just going to figure it out. We're just going to get in this thing together, and we're just, we're just, gonna, we're just not going to grow weary of helping, helping people. Like, that's what we're in the business of doing. And, and isn't that the way to really have an impact? Because I don't know about you, but I really want my life to matter. Uh, the, the second thing that, uh, that I want you to see is found in, in Hebrews, and the Bible says this, but encourage one another daily, that's every day, um, as long as it is called today, which is today, um, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. And, and so the, the second thing that I, I think um, helps a person uh, make an impact is, is simply doing this, uh, it's, it's encouraging someone every single day. Like, this is what you should do. You should pull out your phone and say, hey, Siri, remind me to encourage somebody every day. She will, okay? She, she, she'll make sure that you get the job done. And could you just imagine if we became that people? Like, like when you think about the brand of Christianity, when you think about the brand of Christians and what people that don't know God talk about when they talk about Christians, none of them have ever said, you know, those Christians over there are just the most encouraging people I've ever met. Just, they just won't stop being nice to me. That, it's not a reputation, but could you imagine if it was? Could you imagine if each of us made a decision that we were going to be the most encouraging person at our job? Could you imagine if every single person in this room walked away and decided, hey, I'm going to be the most encouraging person in my neighborhood? And, and think about it like this. When people have a dream, can they bring it to you? Can people dream around you? Can, can people, like when somebody comes to you and goes, you know what, I've been thinking about writing a book. Do you respond, you? Why? <laughs> For what? Or are you going to be a person who goes, man, I, I'm, I'm thinking about writing a book. Go, really, man? That, that's awesome. Like, what, what do you want to write about? Man, I, I had a friend the other day said, man, I, I've, I've told my book idea to about 20 people. You and one other person are the only people that have encouraged me. I'm like, yeah, well, well, maybe they thought that it was a, a bad book at the beginning, but how is he going to get to a good book if somebody doesn't encourage him along the way? I, I don't know about you, but I just, 
I know there's some people in the world that believe that their, their gifting as life is to be critical. They're like, yeah, I'm good at this. I'm like, hmm, how many friends do you have? Like, is that, like, how's your marriage? How's that working out? Like, you know, like, like who, who wants to be around somebody that is constantly being critical? It's like, no, I, I've just already made up my mind. I'm going to encourage people, man. Like, I, I'm just going to be people's fan. It's so much better than being a hater, you know? I'm like, like what, what a great life to just... To be an encouraging person and like, like when somebody's having the, the worst day of their life, I hope they call me. When, when somebody has lost their job, I hope they text me. When somebody's going through a breakup, somebody's going through a divorce, I hope they pick up the phone and call me. Why? Because I'm planning on encouraging somebody every single day. Why? Because I want to make an impact. I remember when I first started writing encouragement letters, I started doing it in middle school. Uh, I would write these encouragement letters, and I'd put it in my friend's locker. And about two or three periods later, um, they would write me back. And I started to see a common denominator in all the letters. W whenever they would reply, they would say, Ryan, I really needed that today. About nine out of ten. Nine out of ten times, they would say, Ryan, I really needed that. So I just developed my own statistic in life that nine out of ten people need encouragement, okay? Like, I just live my life assuming you're depressed, okay? Like, like you're having the worst day of your life. I just assume it. Yep, 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 you're having a horrible day, and it's my job to make it better. I have never heard somebody say, would you please stop encouraging me? It's never going to happen. No one in your world is annoyed with encouragement. Nobody. So I, I've just decided, man, every single day I'm, I'm going to pick a leader. I'm going to pick a volunteer. I'm going to pick a friend. I'm just going to say, hey, I just, just want you to know, you're, man, I, I really learned a lot from you. Maybe it's somebody you work with and you've been competing with sales and you don't really like them. And, you know, I would challenge you, man, pull out your phone and email them, text them, Facebook them, say, hey, here's the deal. Like, I know we've been competing for years and you want to get that raise, you want to get that bonus, and that's cool. I just want to let you know, man, I've, I've learned a few things from you. I appreciate you. Man, could you imagine what would happen if, if th that was the type of pe person that we just decided to be, that we were just going to be the most encouraging person in every room that we walk into? Um, the, next thing, um, the next thing I want you to see is, is the Bible says that the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Now... <laughs> I know sometimes when you read the Bible, you're like, what in the world? How, how, how does that work? And, and Jesus is kind of like, hey, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. It's kind of this upside down kingdom thing. You want to save your life? Lose it. You're like, what? No, I mean, you're, you're just constant. And, and this verse is no different. Like, he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And some of you walked into this room. Some of you are watching online. And you go, I'm on E. I, I, I got nothing to give. This is what the Bible would tell you to do. Give anyways. And I'll take care of the rest, says God. Just be a person that decides to refresh others, and he himself will kind of get this energy out of nowhere. I don't even fully understand it. I've just decided to fully practice it. I've just decided, hey, I'm going to be a person. I'm just, I'm just going to refresh other people. I'm just, whether I'm on E, whether I'm full, and sometimes you are waiting for somebody else to encourage you. Maybe you've heard the term, hurt people, hurt people. I believe, discourage people, discourage people. And I've just decided, you know what? Whether I'm discouraged or encouraged, I'm, I've made a decision about my life. I want it to matter. I want it to make a difference. I'm going to encourage people, and maybe God will give me something on, on the back end a little bit. And, and the other thing that I want you to see is found in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and uh, David ha has just gone through sort of a, a military strike and has lost a lot of people. It's not a good situation at all. And the Bible says that then David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But the Bible says this, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And some of you are waiting for somebody to encourage you. I would tell you to do this. Encourage yourself. Pull out a mirror and tell yourself who you are in the Lord. Don't tell yourself who you are in you. Tell yourself who you are in Christ. Can you imagine if you, you, you're waiting for somebody to value you? You're waiting for somebody to really see you for who you are. You're waiting for somebody to, to appreciate what you bring to the table. Man, what are you going to do? What, what are you waiting for? Like, perhaps your self-esteem is low because you haven't appreciated you. You haven't encouraged yourself. 
Well, what, can you imagine if you decided to just wake up and just go, you know what, well, you open a Bible and you go, Lord, I thank you for who you have made me to be. And I'm, I'm going to encourage myself. And, and, and here's the deal. It'd be nice to hear it from somebody else. But David's go, David found himself in a place where he was absolutely on the end. He had nobody else to turn to. And people were, ready, people were ready to stone the man. And he got to a place where he had to. And I wonder what it looked like. I wonder if somebody needs to just go in the garage and turn on some worship music and you just have a moment. You just go, man, I just, I need to remind myself of who I really am and before I go on with, with, with my whole day. And, and the third thing and the last thing we're going to talk about today is, is, is not just looking for needs and responding, not, not just encouraging someone every single day, but the worst mistake that you can make is, is trying to make an impact alone. Uh, the Bible says this in Acts, and they're describing uh, the, the New Testament church. I mean, this is one of the verses that, that me and my wife have in our house, in our kitchen. The Bible says this, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. I mean, this is the picture of the New Testament church. Could you imagine if it was a picture of your life? I mean, we're not just talking about making a difference and making an impact because there's this idea that we feed people that you can change the world. What if the vernacular became, we can change the world? If your dream only has you in it, it's too small. It's too small. Your dream should be so big that it's got so many people in it and it's helping so many people get better at their life. So you're going, man, I'm, I'm making an impact. And I, what I love about the New Testament church, they just started Craigslist for their church. Like, hey, we're just going to sell our stuff. And whoever has a need, man, we're, we're going to meet. My stuff is your stuff. And, 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 and again, I love their mentality about it. It's just stuff. Uh, it's just stuff. It's just a means to be able to help those around me. And, and if, if you don't have that type of community, I, my hope and prayer is that that, you, that there would be some people that come alongside you or some people that you join. And today you got an opportunity to join a small group that, that your small group would be that type of group that just says, hey, it's just stuff and how, how can we help each other? And so to, to really make an impact, you can't do it alone. You, so you, you have to connect with people to do it. And, and the second uh, person that you need to connect with to make sure that you have an impact is, is, is God. The uh, Bible says this in John chapter 15, Jesus talking. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I mean, I just... There, there's something about us that wants to have a really great life, wants to have an impact, that wants to have success. But you're not going to bear fruit without God. In other words, for your life to really matter and for it to have a ripple effect beyond your lifespan, you're going to need God for that. You're going to need, and, and here's, here's what I don't want any of us to fall, fall, fall prey to or make the mistake of doing. You don't want to make an impact for God without God. You, you don't want to go do ministry and go minister to people for God without God. Jesus is going, abide in me if you want to make an impact. You want to have fruit. You want your life to matter. Start with me. And, and I know we live in a world of next steps and 10 steps to a better life and a better business and a better marriage and being a better parent. But could you imagine if you just gave that to the Lord first? You're like, man, I know, you know what, what our marriage really needs is it really needs, you know, we got, we got to have better communication. Jesus is going, yeah, better communication with me. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if, if, if it was like, hey, I know you guys need to work on your communication, but could, what if you started in the morning with, with, with both of you talking to me instead of you trying to figure out each other together, how's that working out for you thus far, okay? Like, what if you just decided to 
abide in him. You're like, oh, man, you know, my business is going to take off, man. We got this marketing plan. Jesus is going, man, that's a great plan. But what if you just connect it with me and then uh, your marketing plan is cute? But if I put my hand on it, well, you, you want your marketing plan or my favor? You pick. I mean, like, what do you, like, he, abide in me. Choose me for, like, you really want fruit? You really want all of the stuff you think you want is going to be found in connecting with me first. Can you imagine if, if, if we just decided that we just didn't want to make an impact for God without God? You realize that you were created for connection with God. He didn't create you to be a hireling to do stuff for him. He created you so that he could do stuff with you. That's good news for some people that maybe you just thought God wanted to just use you for him. He's like, no, I, I want to use you, but I, I, want to, I want to do something with you and, and do something in you and, and give your life the purpose it was designed to have. And the, the last verse I, I want us to look at is, is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. I want us to look at this word for a moment. Right now we've got a city in in distress trying to figure out what life's going to look like in, in the very near future. And perhaps there are a lot of people, maybe in this room, maybe watching online, that are looking for hope and comfort for tomorrow, which is great, and we can help you with that. But what your soul really needs is hope and comfort for forever, eternal comfort. That's what we're in the business of doing, and that's the impact I want to have. Listen, I don't know about you, but I want heaven to be crowded, okay? And I'm trying to make it more crowded. I hope I'm walking around like this in heaven. Hey, excuse me. Hey, Moses, good to see you. Good to see you. Like, I, I, I hope it's busy. Bible talks about new heaven and new earth. I'm like, Lord, this new heaven you got to build going to have to be so big. I don't know, like, I, I, we going to have way too many people to fit. Like, you're gonna ha- it's going to have to be huge. I, I, I hope the place is crowded because uh, God has set eternity in the hearts of men. It says that in Ecclesiastes. It means every human's got this thing in them that is thinking about, man, what, what's my life going to look like forever? And we're in the business of giving them kind of that eternal hope and that eternal comfort. Not just hope for tomorrow, hope for forever. Not just being aware of people's physical needs, but being aware of their spiritual needs as well. Can you imagine if that were the type of people that we were, we walked around with that sort of mentality that said, Lord, make us aware of the needs of people around us and, and allow us to respond. Uh, there is a, there's been this small group that uh, I just really, really blessed me. They, they saw the need and, and just responded uh, to a, a neighborhood in Wharton County. And, uh, man, lot, lots of elderly people in, in some lower income areas that just don't have as much help perhaps as, as some other areas. And, and this guy just started to rally his small group and even people that weren't in his small group that just wanted to lend a helping hand and, and there was this guy at this house, and he was just standing outside his house, devastated, sitting in a wheelchair, praying for somebody to come by. And this small group comes by, and they just change this guy's life. I mean, I just, I mean, I don't want to just make a difference in somebody's life. I want to do it with some people. I want, I want to do it as, as a group. And so today, you know, out in the lobby, you can sign up for a, a small group, and, and maybe, maybe, you, you get in this small community of people and start asking yourself some really fun questions and begin to look um, in the living room and go, hey, what resources do we have together that can make a difference in one person's life, one neighborhood? One, like, what, what are our collective resources, whether it be monetary resources or some of you, like, the greatest resource you have is, is your brain. You're just really, really smart. And so what if you and some other really, really smart people got together and started to put together some programs for some not smart people, you know? Like what if you just decided to say, you know, we're going to help people make better decisions in life. And who knows, maybe you start a business seminar or maybe, maybe you help college students figure out, you know, college debt. I remember when I 
first took out student loans, it was like, hey, you're going to borrow $40,000. I'm like, great, I'm going to pay back $40,000. And then I graduated. They're like, you owe us sixty. I said, what happened? They said, it's this thing called interest. I said, huh? <laughs> I just didn't know. I mean, could you imagine if you just help people know? Because like, you, you know something that maybe people didn't grow up like you. They don't. They don't know, or, or maybe you, you get in a married small group, and you're sitting around and going, you know, you've been married 10 years, and 15, and 20, and 3, and, and yet you, you know some single people that are just dying to get married, and you're like, they should just interview us really fast and see <laughs> if they still want to do that, you know? It's like, <laughs> you know, like, like, like imagine she's going, I just want you to know what I know, you know? It's like, it's, it, it, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying maybe you don't want the app to figure that out for you. I don't know. You know, like I just, like could you imagine if you just said, hey, you know, in terms of what you're looking for, like here, here are some parameters. In light of what we know, we just we want to make an impact of the people around us and don't want you to go in blind. Maybe, maybe, maybe like, like you did. Or, or, like you're just, you're just getting together going, we, we have something in common that whether it's possessions or wisdom, we, we want to help people, help each other. Keep each other accountable, and I believe you, you can make a difference together. And, and then the greatest part about it is you invite God into that. And can you imagine a group of people that are saying, Lord, here are our resources. Here's our lunches, Lord. Go do miracles with it. Oh, it's just it's a beautiful way to live. It's a beautiful life that I believe that you can have. So uh, to, to recap, I, I, I think uh, each person uh, should, should be able to, to live a life where they, they look at needs and respond. They encourage somebody every single day, and they don't, uh, they don't try to make an impact alone. And I, I think that uh, when you do that, you'll make a lasting impact in your life. Father, I thank you so much for River Point. And God, I pray that uh, you would give us opportunities, that you put needs right under our nose, and that we would be able to respond. Uh, God, I pray that you would put people in our path, at our job, at our gymnasium, at our grocery store uh, that, that need to know you and uh, that need an encouraging word. And I pray, God, that you would begin to put divine words on the inside of us to be able to share with other people and that we'd be the most encouraging person in every room that we walk in. And God, I pray that we wouldn't try and make an impact alone. I pray, God, that we would know that there is a community of people, perhaps, that you have ordained before we were born to do good things with. And God, I pray that you would surround us with phenomenal people to make an impact for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Hey, River Point, we love you. <laughs> Happy Sunday. We've got uh, the grill out there, burgers, and uh, kind of a back-to-school bash. Uh, stick around and uh, meet some people that you didn't know, and feel free to sign up for a small group in the lobby.